The next part we're going to go into is the general approach I use to grammar. Um, this approach is fairly consistent with much of what we know about linguistics, but keep in mind, um, as I said before, this is a reduction, it's a simplification. All grammars are ultimately simplifications of the language, um, and you have to decide on what approach you want to use to simplify the language. Um, and so all grammars do that. Um, the grammars you learned in high school do that. Um, even the most um, thorough grammars of the English language are ultimately simplifications of it. <clears throat> the approach I'm using is one based on how we can simplify it so that we can use it for writing style and for developing our ideas. Developing and refining our ideas and also expressing it in a really clear and precise manner. So it's about content and style really is this approach. It's not about right and wrong. That approach to grammar doesn't really work for too long. Um, once you understand how, the, how much more complicated the language is, um, you'll see why this right and wrong approach to grammar doesn't work. So my approach is a little more consistent with what we know in uh, linguistics, but it is, much like my history, a simplification. <clears throat> it needs to be. Um, this class is really about um, college level writing. We can't get into all the nuances of the English language, you'd have to get a linguistics degree. To do that, we don't have time for it, I'm assuming you don't want to do that right now. You instead, hopefully, just want an approach that's going to give you um, most of the right approaches in most of the um, most occasions, at least in an educated occasion, in a standard written English approach. Um, the three areas you must understand that we're going to shift um, uh, among are these three. <clears throat> understanding the form of language, the function of language, and the style of language, and how you're working with it. Okay, and if you, you'll understand that these three, as I've written them up here, are actually intertwined. I'm going to take them apart, in the book that we're using, I'm going to take them apart and discuss them separately. It's a very artificial thing to do, um, and it's going to be a little bit frustrating, especially at first. Um, because, really, these three things are linked to each other. You really can't separate them without destroying them. I'm going to do it anyway, just so that we can understand it, and then we're going to put it all back together again. That's when it's going to start to make sense. But at first, it'll be a bit confusing, because quite often the form of something depends on its function. And quite honestly, style is really dependent upon form and function working together to create that style. So it's very hard to take them apart, but again, we're going to have to do that at first. Now, form is really what something is. Form is what something is in the language. These are really, um, you've learned form primarily, and most of what you probably know, and most folks know about grammar, is form. <clears throat> this is parts of speech, and that's how I approach it. Um, these are nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Um, conjunctions, prepositions, <clears throat> those are the six primary parts of speech, the ones that I think really matter the most. Um, also, there are uh, pronouns and interjections, but those aren't nearly as important as the other six. So, <clears throat> knowing those, knowing what they are, and knowing how to recognize them, is really what's behind form. That's what chapter two does. It will rehearse much of what you've already learned about form, but you're going to see I have a slightly different approach to it. I have a hierarchy of form. <clears throat> I see certain forms as being more important than other forms. And certain forms really, um, for example, uh, prepositions don't have much meaning to them. You, it's very hard to define the word of, for example. Um, <clears throat> but it has a very important a structural aspect to it. So we're going to come to that when we get to form. So understanding the different parts of speech is very important. Um, function is going to be what something does in a sentence. Now, this overlaps with form. Function deals with ideas of subjects, verbs, objects, complements primarily. Um, that's over here. Now, a lot of folks do confuse, for example, nouns with subjects. They're not the same thing. A noun is really a part of speech. It's a form. Function is really when you get into what's a subject. Um, most often, um, subjects are nouns, but nouns aren't always subjects. They're very often objects of verbs or prepositions. 
And so function is a different area, but it gets confused with form. What you're going to need to understand when we get to chapter 3 is how function interacts with form. Certain forms have a variety of functions, but functions tell you more about the logic of the sentence and how it's constructed. That's what it does. So you can have one thing, but it can do something very different. You could, in fact, I know this will sound odd right now, you could have something that is in the form of a verb, but it could function as the subject of the sentence. That's very odd for folks, um, but we'll get to that when we get to chapter 3. So keep that in mind. Form and function are different things. Form is what something is. Function is what something does. Function is what something does. <clears throat> you might think of it, a number of analogies you could draw with this. You might think of it, you might have a baseball bat, but you could use it to pound in nails. Okay? Um, a better analogy might be that you could be one person, <clears throat> but when you go to your job, you function as something else. Okay, you can be this person and give yourself a name, Susie Smith, but when you go to work, you function as the dispatcher for a logistics company. Okay? And then when you go home, you function as a mother of three children and, you know, as a wife of a husband or something like that. Um, you could, you know, function in different, um, 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 on different occasions in different ways, but you're in the form of one person. Different contexts, different functions. Okay. Style gets to the effect of that language on the reader. And it get and it's very important to keep in mind that this is not just artistic, flowery language. Um, all writing, all writing has a style. All writing has a style. The style you use in text messages is dramatically different than the style you would use, say, in a letter to an employer. Um, you want to have a different effect on that person. Um, you might have a very different style for communicating with your family than you do with your friends, than you do with your coworkers, than you do at the college. That style is how you affect people. And it isn't something that's really abstract. Um, it is something that instead might not be as clear as a mathematical problem, but it's undeniable in the language you use. The language I'm using right now is standard written English or standard, or standard English, an approximation of standard written English in a spoken form. Most people who understand English can understand me just fine. This might not be the language I use um, if I lived in the South. I might shift more to a dialect if I lived in the South and if I were talking to my friends, my close friends or relatives. You would shift the style. Well, that style is dependent upon the form and function. And you're going to see that the style you create, and the style I'm going to emphasize here, is one that's appropriate to an academic setting. It is not one, I would not encourage you to do one that is um, overblown or overly, um, or tries to give the impression of an artificial sophistication. It should instead be precise and detailed and well-developed. That's the style that works best in an academic and in a professional setting. That is dependent upon knowing the guidelines that come from a, uh, standard American English, which is based in certain forms and functions that work within that context. Okay? So all three of these work together. <clears throat> all three of these overlap with each other and are interdependent. I'm going to separate them to talk about them distinctly. That's going to create some confusion at first. So I want you to be patient, especially as after we get through um, um, chapter 2 and we start in with chapter 3, many people get confused at that point. So I'll need you to be patient until we can fit these together, then it's going to start to make sense to you. Okay? So just understand at certain times we're going to be talking about the form of language, the function of language, and the style of language. We're in one area, and the next area, and the next area, but really in the end they are going to come together. Okay? Take care.